I have another product from Keith Titanium I want to share with you today. This is the TI6015 Titanium Pot. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on it, keep watching. Before we get started, I just want to thank Keith Titanium for sending out the 6015 so that I could share it with you. Now the quick backstory is, I made a video recently on another Keith Titanium Pot, the 6018, which is considerably larger than this one. And the backstory on that was, is I had reached out to Keith some time ago to ask about one of their titanium pots I wanted to do some cooking with, and I wasn't sure what size it was I wanted. And there were two that looked like they would be a good size, the 6018, the one I previously reviewed, and this one, the 6015. Well, Keith solved the issue for me. They sent them both, one inside of the other, and when they arrived, I had both of them. Now the other pot is considerably bigger than this one. I'll put a link to that review at the end of this video, so if you want to go back and take a look at it. And I use it in a very unique way. Yes, you can use it over a heat source to create a stew or whatever else you want, but I did some baking in it and it turned out very well. So now I'm using the smaller of the two pots and I just want to share that with you and tell you how I've been using it. But before we do that, I'll just bring the video in a little closer, or the camera in a little closer, so I can give you a few specs and closer looks for this pot. All right, of course, I'm going to be putting all the specifications for the 6015 in the video description for your reference, as well as the links where you can take another look at it. But I'll go over them very quickly right now. So the big thing about this pot, obviously being made from titanium, is that it is very lightweight. How about 8.7 ounces, which is 248 grams. Now, as far as dimensions go, 7.1 inches in diameter which is 180 millimeters 3.1 or 3.4 inches in height which is 86 millimeters now the capacity for this is rated at 60.9 fluid ounces or 1.8 liters so just a few looks at it and a few features and I'll tell you how I have been using this one of the nice things oh yeah of course there is a stuff sack I just wanted to make sure you saw that one of the nice things about this are these handles though they're, they're a silicone coated handle and they fold down quite snugly against the sides the, it's not a D-ring, I guess it's a rectangular ring on top. It's not silicone coated and it's not, in, how should I say, not notched to make it stand up, but it is snug enough that it does stand up, making it easy to get on and off either with my hands or with a stick or a fork or something through here. You can see that there are steam holes, which will work as drain holes. There's not a lot of them, but if you're patient, you'll, you'll drain off any water from pasta, rice, or whatever else you have inside. Now, one thing I want to mention right now, and I'll talk more about why in a minute, is that the cover is recessed just a tiny bit, not a whole lot, but just a tiny bit. And the benefit, of course, of that is if I want to use this as an oven, I have a rim that I can use hot or lay hot coals on top of the lid and use it that way without them falling off, of course. Let me just give you a look on the inside of the pot. So not a lot to see in, in here. There are no measurements for as far as volume goes, but I don't know that I need it. One of the things I do like about this is the fact that it is so rounded towards the bottom. That makes cleanup so, so easy. It truly, truly does. Now, and I mentioned baking with this. Well, I did use it today for my lunch, and I'll actually throw a picture of that, or a short clip of that in the video, and I made a uh, chicken cacciatore. That's what I actually made in it today. But I've used it for others, and it's appeared on other videos, like black bean soup was another one I cooked in this. But I did also try baking with this. Now, it's not my first choice for baking in, but it can work. And the way I used it, well, I used it in two different ways, mostly experimentally to see how well it works. One is with a very small pizza stone. I have the small one from the firebox stove. It will set in, it will not set flat against the bottom, but it goes pretty close. There's a bit of a gap under the stone, and so it's not in full contact with the bottom. That does not harm the way it's going to operate, or it doesn't impair it or cause any effect as far as operating, other than you lose a little bit of depth. That's about the only thing about it. And the other thing I used was a triangular rod made of a bent piece of metal that it will, I don't know, stands about three quarters inch off. It sets in just nicely and then I can lay whatever my baking dish is on top of this. Not a lot of depth, not a lot of room, but enough to do some baking of items. Something, you know, not too big, but you know, enough for at least one person. Now we're starting to look like a meal. Things are all mixed through. The only thing left to do now is to let it stew for a while. Put the cover on. Turn the heat down, check it in a few minutes, see how it's looking. And when I think it's ready, 
We'll come back and do the taste test. All right, a few closing thoughts. On the Keith Titanium 6015 Titanium 1.8 liter pot. So of the two pots that Keith sent, this is the one I find myself bringing out most often into the woods because it's just a better size for cooking soups, stews, or whatever else I want to cook in this. It is great for one person. You can make enough for two people in this easily. After that, it gets to be a little small, and that's where the other pot comes in. It's really a nice pot for cooking for three or four people, so that's obviously the reason I don't bring it out very often. However, the other pot works great as a Dutch oven, something that you can do some baking in. And if you go back and watch the other video, you'll see how I accomplished that. But the only thing you need is something inside as a heat sink. So I'll let you go back and take a look at that. Now, that's not to say that you can't bake in this. As I mentioned, I have just not a lot. It's a little bit small, enough for maybe some small dessert, but not something of a huge nature. You wouldn't do a pizza in this one. You could in the other one. Okay, so I really like this pot and I'm thankful that Keith Keith did send it out for me. I'll be continuing to use this. You'll see it appear in other videos. I'll be putting all the information in terms of its specifications in the video description, as well as the links to where you can take another look at it in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.